All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our Friday NetPix Premier Trader University Hangout. So it is, uh, what is it, April 12th, uh, a few days before tax day, boo, at least here in the uh, U.S. Yeah, I see Brian kind of giving it the thumbs down. So we've been, uh, feels like we've been on this whole tax thing for weeks, for months. I don't know. What has it been, Brian? <laughs> it seems like it's never ending. Then we'll follow all of our extensions, and then we'll do all the extensions till September, and then we'll start over again for uh, for April. Wait, exactly. it never ends. This is like 12 months a year. Oh, well, what are you going to do? So uh, I see we've got a, a lot more people on uh, the Hangout today than uh, normal, so let me explain a few things to uh, for the new people, kind of how we do this. So uh, today you've got uh, Brian Short there, and you've got uh, Troy Noonan as well, and uh, my name is Mark Soberman. We'll each present a little bit of information, so I've got a little bit to talk to you about. Brian's got a little bit to talk to you about, and Troy's got some really great stuff. Uh, since I know we've probably got a lot of people on here who uh, have uh, gotten involved in the Trend Jumper or the free uh, Trend Jumper uh, sample system, and then he's going to be showing you that, uh, and also uh, what happened on the full fledged this week as well. But this is interactive, so you guys can definitely ask us questions. Um, you just need to kind of uh, sign in there to the, the chat role, basically, and you can be fairly anonymous, uh, anonymous when you do that. It's not a big registration or anything, so you can be a guest uh, and ask questions. So take advantage of that because this is truly a live show at this point. Sometimes people say they're not getting the video. Just do a refresh. Uh, it should work for you. You can always uh, watch it as well live inside of uh, YouTube in case you're not on our site and I should remind you we've been doing this for quite some time so you can always go into YouTube and type in uh, Netpix Hangout and go back and see any of the prior versions that uh, or prior uh, hangouts that you want. We've had some really good topics. Uh, we've interviewed people who are trading with our systems, uh, had some really good sessions that way as well and those are always pretty fascinating to see uh, kind of people just like yourself uh, doing some trading. So definitely take advantage of that. There's a lot of those uh, in the archives. Uh, inside of uh, YouTube. So that's what we've got uh, in store today. Like I said, um, ask questions as we go uh, and uh, we'll you know, be more than happy to uh, answer those about any topic related to our systems, the markets, any suggestions uh, we may have. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, sort of kick this off uh, with a bit of a continuation on something that uh, we talked about in uh, recent weeks. So I'm going to turn on my screen share and then uh, I'll just ask uh, Brian or Troy, if for some reason you guys don't see my screen, you just let me know because I'm going to get rid of your uh, your lovely faces here. So You're good, Mark. All right. Thank you, Brian. So um, we talked about, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but we were talking a little bit about where some of the market opportunities are that are sometimes in, in a bit of a surprise area or some places that people don't typically look. So we've talked a lot about Forex, and I know Troy is going to show you some of this, where everybody defaults automatically to the Euro US dollar. And we've been big supporters and really promoting a number of other pairs, really in all of our systems. Like if you look at what we trade in Keltner Bells, if you look at what we have inside the Trend Jumper, I mean, we're absolutely about the Euro US dollar, but we're not only about the euro US dollar. The same goes in futures. You know, uh, Brian may even be showing, I'm not sure what markets he's going to show, but in recent weeks, we've talked a lot about markets like unleaded gas and heating oil futures. Uh, and a week or two ago, we started to talk about, you know, uh, Brent crude and we talked about copper and we talked about uh, the Nikkei, you know, the, the Japanese index, which is kind of what you're seeing uh, on your screen here. Uh, because there's a lot of great opportunity that's not always the obvious which is the S&P mini, right? That's the obvious futures market. And we tell people all the time, that's actually one of the hardest markets to be consistently successful with. So one thing I wanted to show you a little bit today was a couple uh, things on the charts uh, that I came up with. And another thing I wanted to show you, because this has come up a few times recently. Uh, now, this is a little bit more trade station specific because uh, in trade station, you have something in futures called the continuous contract. And TradeStation has set up for us continuous contracts in a number of markets. Like we could put in the at sign and CL, which is crude oil futures, and this will give us, and this is on the chart, and don't worry about seeing all the detail, a weekly chart of crude oil futures without us having to know, oh, wait, what day does the you know, March contract roll over and the May contract and the June contract? You know, Not having to know that, you can just go with the continuous contract 
and actually it becomes much easier to develop a specific trade plan or system using the continuous contract. So when we do things like crude oil or the Russell E Mini, which is TF, it's as easy as going at sign TF and I don't have to do all the research on when these markets roll over, which can be pretty tough. And as you can imagine, if you're testing a system and it's rolling over during the week, like you know, crude oil did, for instance, or Brent crude did, and next week crude oil, it can really mess up your testing, your results, and your real-time profits or loss. But we run into a situation where some markets, TradeStation doesn't give us a continuous contract. One of those situations that I ran into was a market that's only going to be probably familiar to those of you outside the U.S., but it's something called the Buxel. And the symbol is FGBX. So uh, if I was to go at sign FGBX and try to get a chart, it's going to say nothing's going to come up because TradeStation never built a continuous contract. Well, this makes it really hard for us even to develop consistent winning trade plans when we don't have a continuous contract to base it on. But one thing you can do, and this, like I said, I know this is a little bit more specific for TradeStation, but you can actually create your own continuous contract. And when we started doing this, the results, I mean, were like night and day. So what you would do is you would go to symbol lookup, go to custom futures. There's a tab called custom futures, and you type in the root symbol, which in this case, I'm going to put in FGBX. Now, the good news is in TradeStation, it knows that there's four contracts a year traded, March, September, June, and December. So it's automatically checking those. And then your job is just to know approximately when these markets roll over. And typically, you can get this at the exchange's website or just by doing a Google search. So and it's got some neat things. Like right now, it's defaulting to saying roll over when there's one consecutive day of higher open interest. Well, that typically is right around the time that we have a rollover. Usually open interest shifts in, within a 24-hour period. But you don't have to do it that way. If you find out that the buxel rolls over, let's say, you know, uh, a week before the, the contract expiration, you've got the opportunity down here under time to say, hey, seven days prior to the expiration date or 10 days prior to the ex expiration date. You can do expiration date. You can do things like first notice date delivery date. And the reason you want all these you know, uh, options is because futures exchanges are all a little different. So you can truly create a custom continuous contract that is nearly perfect with what TradeStation would have offered you. And what happens down below is as you change the settings, it gives you a very specific custom symbol. And there's a bizarre code at the end here, which it may be hard to see on your screens, I realize. Uh, but like right now, the code is 110XC. But if I was to change it to seven days prior, it changes to 107XC. So there's a whole little coding going on in the background with TradeStation that will enable it to give us exactly what we've told it is the rollover. So I can take any of those uh, symbols, like one day, uh, one day of higher interest, or I could say, you know what, when there's more volume, go ahead and give me a volume one when the volume picks up. And it'll give me a custom symbol. And then when I bring that up, I'll actually be able to chart a true continuous contract. I mean, here I am on a FGBX, a Buxel continuous contract where it didn't exist before. This also happens on Brent crude. And the reason I bring this up, and I'm kind of stealing James Kessick, who's one of our coaches, next week he's going to introduce, for those of you really maybe outside the U.S., a custom trade plan inside of our PTU on Brent crude. Not crude oil, not heating gas, not unleaded gas. It's BZ. Uh, and it trades on the CME. But if I go at BZ, I'm not going to get a symbol because lo and behold, TradeStation never built a continuous contract. So for a lot of us, that meant dead in the water on developing a plan here. But sure enough, you can do just what I'm telling you today. You can go to Lookup. You can go to Custom Futures. Put in your symbol root. It's going to find it. It's going to know that there's a contract every single month. And then the only real challenge is us sort of figuring out where the – expiration is. And sometimes you got to do a little research on that uh, in order to come up with that. But we'll end up with a symbol that we'll use and we'll be able to automatically get a weekly chart, a daily chart, and a chart to trade off of. So what was pretty neat about this was I went ahead and James is working on his European plan. And I was like, you know, I'm just kind of curious. What if I just looked at this 
and put it on U.S. market hours because I know it trades throughout the U.S. hours. And a few things I noticed about the chart that I want you guys to notice, I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this. If you remember from last week when Brian showed you heating oil, you're going to notice a pretty uh, similar pattern on Brent crude. It tends to step down very smoothly without a lot of overlap. It also, when it rallies, tends to go up without a ton of overlap. If you compare this chart with crude oil, which has all kinds of noise and all kinds of overlap, it's a completely different style and approach to trading. So James was looking at this from the perspective of what we call our PTU2, which requires pullbacks into our moving averages before it gets a setup. And I was kind of noticing, I was like, you know what, James? It actually looks like this market likes to break out a lot and not pull back. Like here's a perfect example where you could lose a trade if you're waiting on the pullback because the breakout just happened. So I literally took our crude oil hours, US session, but instead converted it to breakout and got fairly impressive, almost shockingly good results with very little effort on my part to get these results. I mean, it wasn't like I spent a lot of time trying to develop this trade plan. Uh, and I know, again, I'm going to show you some of the specifics here. There's a lot going on this screen. I'll try to make the numbers a little bigger. Uh, but basically what I'm looking at on the screen here is going to be this column here, this column C. And this is the weekly number, real actual result, minus you have to take out commissions and a little bit of slip, of course, but based upon what this would be on a go forward. Now, it's not perfect every week. There's definitely losing weeks, but more weeks than not, it's positive. We only had one stretch here in early March, late February, that you had a few consecutive negative weeks. And understand this is 100% following mechanical. This is not using anything we teach you in the training which we always end up beating these results. We call it with training. But we end up getting a bottom line since, in this case, November of $10,000 a contract, almost $500 a week purely on a mechanical basis with one contract. And this has nothing to do with actually putting in some things which we talk about, which is trailing. So take a look at the results here for the week. If you can see it on the screen, $690, $690 last week, $600 the week before. This is all going for a fixed target. But when we start to get a little bit maybe fancier with our trade plans, we can start to do some things where we say, you know what, let's not go for a fixed target. Let's actually trail this trade. And I'm going to turn on the trailing and take a look what happens on certain given weeks. So this week, based upon a trail, because like I said, I believe this is a breakout oriented market. On a single contract, the same week made $1,500 versus $690. Now, it's not always going to outperform fixed target, but pretty amazing when it does. And the reason for that is let's kind of find the reason why. If we go to this week and look at a few trades, here's a short trade that was from today. Now this fixed target would have got in at 102.10 and it would have exited at 101.80, 30 ticks. That's it, done. $300, done for the day. But with the trail turned on, it continued on down all the way to 101.61. So picked up another $190. Now you're going to see other examples probably this week. Here's another one yesterday where we went short at 105.39. And rather than getting out at the target, 105.09, we ended up finally getting out at 104.58. Okay, that's another, if my math is correct, $510 on a single contract due to the trail on the way down. So it's kind of neat because a couple things happen here. One, being able to go and use a continuous contract enables us to really much more properly test a market like this. And number two, it gives us the opportunity to test things like trailing. And number three, it gives us the opportunity to determine, hey, is this more of a breakout market or more of a pullback type market? So again, this is all in the U.S. hours. There's going to be a whole separate plan on European hours. Kind of excited about this one. It's not a super high volume market. There's a little bit of bid ask spread. There's going to be more than a tick. Usually it's about a couple ticks, so you're going to have to count on at least a tick of slippage on every trade, maybe two, um, but still potentially very, very profitable. So we're doing the same thing on this uh, Nikkei index where we've got our continuous contract going. What I look at here, just so you know why I've got this up, is I'm looking at where's the volume kicking in. Could this one work in the Asian session hours, which would be PM US hours? Could it work in the European hours? So this is what the thinking, what we go through, when we develop trade plans for you. But I'd like you guys to know a little bit about 
kind of what's going on in the background and what we're working on. So I could talk about this all day. You guys don't want that. So let me go ahead and uh, kind of shut up and uh, hand it off to uh, Brian. Wow, did you just say you're going to shut up? I, I said I was going to shut up, but I, I'm not going to actually probably carry through on it. I'll probably interrupt you more than I'm going to hold you to that later. I will. Actually, Mark, that's uh, very exciting. I know you and I chatted a little bit uh, about possibly adding that to our mix on uh, trading for next week. So that's very, very impressive results. I'm really a big fan right now of uh, the trailing approach. And so I have just a few things I want to share with you this week from our trading. I know we have a lot of new people uh, in the room, so I'm going to maybe go into a little more detail here. Uh, I know some of the old old timers know uh, our situation, but Mark and I trade an account together, and um, we trade uh, primarily uh, uh, heating oil, uh, RB. So we've got some uh, uh, some of those that mix in there. We've got the DAX, which we trade, and we trade silver. And so each of those markets have different starting times, and 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 the the great thing about diversifying yourself. In that regard, is you know one week you're going to have a market that you may not will underperform, and I've kind of got that this week. Um, but the three other markets did great for us. We had an awesome week performance-wise, and uh, so the theme that I want to communicate to you this week is this: um, if you were on the hangout last week, you heard me talking about heating oil and uh, how great it was, it, and it was amazing. Per contract last week, heating oil for those that weren't here produced. $3,500 roughly in profit. I don't remember the exact number, but it was roughly that number. That is amazing. And uh, we traded that. We traded, Mark and I traded multiple contracts on that last week. And that was one of those weeks where you go, man, this is awesome. But I almost, I would have bet money that this week we weren't going to see that. And we didn't. Heating oil just did not do anything for us. And in fact, this week it ended up down $450 roughly per contract. Okay, so out of the four markets that we trade, we had one market that was down, and uh, the rest of them did produce for us. Now, the thing that I want to uh, really communicate to you this week is, as traders, it's tempting. Last week, when you heard me say how great heating oil was, I almost guarantee there were probably some traders inside the university that said, "I'm going to start trading this market." That's the worst thing you can do. Okay, don't uh, seek out the performance and jump from winner to winner because I guarantee it's over time going to equal out. What's performing well right now, you know, last week is not going to perform well as, you know, potentially this week. Uh, or, or, you know, so don't jump from hot performing market to hot performing market. Every week Mark um, gives us a, a rundown of all the markets that we track inside of PTU. We track a lot of different markets. Um, and each week the winner a lot of times will be at the bottom of the list the next week. Okay, so and so resist that temptation, I guess, as traders. Also, kind of intra week, you've got that uh, potential too. And uh, so this week on silver, I'm going to bring up my chart here. We had a sequence of trades that gave us three losing trades in a row. I know a lot of traders would, uh, you know, potentially stop trading after that. We had we had a great Monday and a Tuesday. Okay, we had winners. We we uh, trade power of quitting one. So we had winners on each of those sessions, heading you know nicely into the week, and then all of a sudden on Wednesday, uh, and let me bring this chart up so you can see it. We had three losers in a row. So you know trading is about losing. You uh, you got to accept those losses. Not only that, you've got to stick with your plan. We sticking with our plan this week. Silver ended up six hundred and fifty dollars per contract traded. Now a lot of traders during the midweek would have stopped trading. You know they would have said, well something's broken, something's not working. So let me uh, share my screen so you can kind of see the sequence here. And I'm, I'm sharing this part with you because this is really where, as traders, you have to, to focus at sticking with your approach. And that's the key. So this is the sequence. And the thing that really, really was frustrating here on Wednesday about these uh, trades on silver Hey, hey Brian, is, can you uh, enlarge that? Yeah, I thought it was pretty, pretty big. Let me try and make it even bigger. Yeah, just as big as you can, yeah. All right, so Thanks. the thing that was frustrating about these trades is they would just trigger in and zoom down to the stop. I mean, I heard these trades triggering off, and they would just go right down to the stop. So something was just a little jittery about silver this week. All right, the point I want to make here is you've got to accept the losses. All right, you can't stop trading after you have a series of losing trades 
you know, a lot of traders will sit here and they'll say, well, I'm going to wait for the next uh, sequence of winners to come. And then what they do, they jump back into the market and uh, another series of losing trades will inevitably come. Okay. So again, that's the theme of what I want to communicate this week. Let me kind of share with you the results on the rest of the markets that uh, we trade. Uh, so let me kind of show you that. So here I'm going to bring over the, the strategy report. Here's silver. So 650 per week on silver or per contract for the week, I should say. On uh, our, uh, let me show you heating oil. Uh, remember I told you that was a loser on the week, 462 okay, per contract, where last week was 3,500 per contract profit. So that's the difference this week. RB is another market that we trade that's unleaded uh, gasoline. And uh, this market did very well for us this week. This one kicked in and gave us $1,200, almost $1,300 per contract traded. And, and Mark and I trade multiple contracts. We don't just trade single contracts on this market. And then the probably the home run market for the week is the DAX. Let's take a look at it. $2,400 per contract. It was 100% on the week. Again, we trade power of quitting one. Okay, Five trades on the week, each one of those trades. Uh, were a winner. So another really, really solid week uh, trading uh, the PTU method, by the way. Uh, for those that don't know, this is a, what we call the PTU 2.0 approach. And uh, in a second, you're going to see another approach uh, from Troy, uh, who trades uh, the trend jumper. So, Mark, that's what I wanted to say for this week. Great. Thanks, Brian. I think <clears throat> this is really critical for traders to succeed with any trading and certainly with any of our trade systems, uh, there is a tendency to bounce around much too quickly yeah. between um, market to market, plan to plan. So Brian, you just showed the DAX had an unbelievable week. Yep. Let's talk about what the DAX did last week. So last week on one plan, it made uh, $248, which hey, I'll never look $248, $248 in the eye and be unhappy. But the week before it had lost $966. So in the two weeks, you were down about $700 very easy to quit on this market. And what happened if you quit on this market? You just missed out on $2,500 per contract. So Brian mentioned one thing we provide you is a lot of past history and results. So you can go in and maybe in a way psychologically kind of um, work with yourself a little bit and realize, oh, wait a minute, this has happened before. There's been some losing weeks before. There's been some losing streaks. I shouldn't give up on it because you know what? The first three weeks in January, $1,000, $1,259, $1,344. It was unbelievable. So that may have reeled in a lot of people. And then all of a sudden, week four of that, minus 520. Everybody quits, right? Because they've got that one negative week, maybe based upon timing. And then you go chase maybe heating oil. That was popular that week or really good. And then, of course, the next week, it retrenches a little bit. You've got to stick with your markets because it's all about what is the average over weeks and months that count. And you need to remind yourself that that average right now is $600 a week and it's going to go up as a result of this week. So that means that some weeks are going to be way above 600, some weeks are going to be below it. If you try to cherry pick, you'll never even meet the averages and I guarantee you, you're going to underperform. And I, I, I know Troy talks about this a lot as well. It's that consistency. Now I'm not saying chase a market that's just got bad performance because once in a while it has a good week. But if you see good performance consistently, your job is to stick with that market uh, and not go ahead and try to move around. It works that way in mutual funds. It works that way when you day trade. So uh, great point, Brian. Troy? Yeah, great. Thanks. It is a great point. It's one of the critical points. I mean, it's a make or break, I think, for a majority of traders because human nature is you want to go with the winner and you want to ditch the loser, but you're always behind. You're always behind. After the winners, what do you think happens after two steps forward? It's the wrong time to start because you get the one step back, right? And then right when you've taken more pain than you can handle at the end of the one step back, then you quit and you miss the two steps forward. And so yeah, that's a slippery slope. And you could, there's a lot of things you can do to prevent that. Okay, and, it and, and I talk about that every day in the live training. And this is a theme that always comes up. So um, let me switch gears. I want to show you the trend jumper. And Mark, um, I went ahead and opened up a, a Brent crude chart while you were talking and just I copied the um, heating oil trade plan that I use. 
Let me just pull this up. And I just put it on, 20 tick momentum bar on Brent. Didn't know what to expect. I've never seen this in my entire life. And those are the last two trades. Yeah, it's got to be a good trend jumper market because um, <clears throat> I think anything that's good on the breakout is going to probably be good uh, on the trend jumper. So yeah, it doesn't doesn't surprise me. It's you know it's a little lower volume, but uh, it's just another example you know where there's hidden opportunities, hidden gems all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And and that's where a lot of the best trading is is where the herd and the crowd is not. So um, I know there's a lot of of interest in the free strategy that we've been giving away and I want to just kind of go to that and show you a little bit on that if you don't have it you can certainly get it because it's free and um, it looks like the trend jumper let me blow it up and let me just go to today's session I could walk through more but I just kind of want to get through a few different things here so this strategy focuses on just one of the trend jumper setups. We call it the crossover trade, and it's really designed to get you in to a move quickly before it occurs or before, you know, right when it's beginning. So you get some reversal trades and you get some good breakout trades. And then this combines with the signature uh, setup that's called the jump trade. And the jump trade is not even in this particular five minute. Dowie mini strategy. This is one setup, the crossover trade, and that's partly why it's successful. And as you get better at this, and if you decided to become a full trend jumper member, you can then add the jump trade to it, and you're going to find a lot more trade opportunities. And I'll show you that in a moment. So the way it works is that you know you got this crossover happening, this little white line confirms the direction we want to go, and it has to cross over the dotted red line and then when you get a setup bar which is all explained in the training that comes with the free strategy it's going to print on the chart you're going to get a little plus sign there you're going to get targets if you click on the bar you're going to see the trade in the data window and I realize the data window is very small because I didn't format it for this but all the trades are there stop entry targets okay and you get the nice risk reward ratio because we're usually going for targets and stop uh, targets that are larger than how much we have at risk. Okay, and I'll show you that in a moment. So this was today's session, and there's a trade plan that goes with it. Tells you when to start. Tells you how many trades to take, when to quit. It's all there, and it can be traded as a single position approach, two and three. This one I actually designed as a three position approach because I just saw so many great opportunities at different target levels I wanted to make this so that it you know it would grow with you as you grew your account with it okay so you could start it with one build it up to two and ultimately turn it into a three position approach so this morning right on time triggers in here our first targets at the middle target and wouldn't you know it it misses it by just two ticks so you're getting in at seven fourteen seven seven three right here and the target is at 14,798, which is nice. It's right below that 800 key level. And it gets as high as 96. And then it stalls out. And, you know, this is all happening, this next bar that comes down within five minutes. But I was watching it. It's actually in the middle of a boot camp training today. And I was watching this on the side while I was, while I was talking. And I noticed that it, uh, you know, it looked like it had a chance to go through. And what do you do in this case? You know, do you stay with the trade plan through and through, or do you trade for profit? Each trader is going to be different. All right. Well, I just posted these trades in my spreadsheet without any sort of interjection or, uh, you know, art to trading. I just kind of put in the results, dots on the chart. Well, what ended up happening is it hung in there for quite some time, but then it ultimately stopped and reversed. Okay, it ended up not hitting its target. It ended up stopping, but look at where the stop was. The stop was, uh, the, it was, well, originally it was here. Could you guys see that? Let me just make this bigger. Originally it was here, okay? But the reversal came there, and it cut the risk on the trade. Okay, so if you're not trading for profit, which you probably would want to do in this case, you probably take a little profit off of that. 
you're taking a less of a loss than what it would have been, and instead you're going short, and that one gets you to your first target for a full winner, your second target for an even bigger winner, and then the trailer only picked you up a few extra points. Okay, but this loss combined with this winner gave you power of quitting. And the next thing you know, without inter any interjection, 100% mechanical, you're able to quit for the session with a modest gain, but it ended up being 12, uh, let's see, I forgot what it was, actually, i got to check. It ended up being 13 points. Yeah, not too bad, huh? Let me just show you just one more. If you would have kept trading, then you would have ended up with this one. The very next trade long, it went to full target, hit it right on the nail. But that's not the trade plan. Okay, the trade plan is power of quitting. One, you get your full winner, you hit your goals, you're done. Okay, because you could have easily lost too. But it's pretty robust. I mean, it wins a lot. But let me just go back to yesterday. And yesterday, remember, we're starting at 820. Well, yesterday, this one triggered in, set up at 830, and it ended up coming down and it hit its middle target. But that middle target was not far enough to um, satisfy the trade plan. Okay, the trade plan asks for a certain amount. This one got 10 points. It wants 15 to qualify for that first winner to that second target for power of quitting. And so you have to take a second trade. Or you could just stop if you're happy with that, but that's not the trade plan. The trade plan would have you going long, and then look what happened. It ended up getting a nice target to that middle target there, and that was good for 37 points. And then you start trailing the purple line. Okay, that's nothing special, just an exponential moving average. And you couldn't get any further on this one, but it got 17 points for your remaining one or two positions. If you're doing three positions, it ended up with 83 points. So it's got this really great dynamics, you know, the dynamic goal setting built in to the trade plan and the way it works. And you're going to see this with some of the other examples I show you. So while I'm here, and this is such a clean and easy to see uh, trade, let me borrow this thick line right here, put on a few others. Between the entry, which is this top line, and the lower line, that's how much you're risking on this trade. The first target is pretty close to one and a half times that. Maybe it's 1.3 or 1.4. Okay, so you got that really nice risk reward ratio. The next target up, you're getting close to two to one on that. And with your trailer, where you can run for a big long amount of time, that really, really makes for a nice risk reward ratio. And when when you're trying to scalp out profits, and some of these trades you might consider scalps, like the, the first one on the left only went for 10 points, that risk reward ratio is super important because most scalps require that you risk more than what you hope to gain, and then you gotta just hit it on the winning percentage with a big winning percentage. But this one's giving you the winning percentage that's right in the sweet spot. It's going to give you that two steps forward, one step back. That's that nice stair-stepping equity curve that you always want to have. But it's also going to combine the dynamics of, of the, the market. It's going to adjust and, and give you that really favorable risk-reward ratio and then really smart uh, trade management once you're in the trade because that's also you know, a big percentage of the battle is when you get out of a trade. It's not just getting in. The trend jumper is giving you these great setups because what it's trying to do is find um, unique places of immediate support and resistance and then give you um, places to jump off of for quick and immediate profits. That's the, the basic philosophy of the strategy. Okay, It's like jumping off of a trampoline. And when you lose your momentum going up off of that trampoline, that's where that target is. That's where you want that target to be. And it's pretty darn accurate um, a lot of the time, sometimes too accurate. Let me show you this one. This is the other Dowie Mini. This is the 377 tick chart that we've been using in the trade room for months and months, dating all the way back uh, to when the Trend Jumper first came out. 
And it has been on an amazing winning streak. I don't know if I've ever seen a winning streak quite like this unless I were to look at, say, heating oil or unleaded. But it's literally the last losing session was uh, last uh, March 15th. And the, one, the last one before that was February 15th. So here we are, 30 almost, I don't know, I lost count, 35, 36 sessions, and it's only had two losing sessions in that amount of time. And today, another winner. And again, this is the crossover trade. This is the same trade that we're giving away on the five-minute chart. And it was another winner. It triggered in. Notice that it's a small trade because it's just the dynamics of the market. It came up, hit the target, and then notice, remember what I said about the trampoline? Look what happened. It started to fall off. And, I mean, good thing we got out of that one, right? The trailer didn't even get us anything but the cost of, of the commission. But still, one and done, power of quitting, another winning session. You know, we had sessions earlier in the week that were 40, 50 points. This one was 12 points. It is what it is. The way we trade is we take what the market wants to give us and move our account forward steadily on a, consi on a consistent basis. We treat our trading like we're operating a business. Okay? And that's the pathway to success. Now, I know we have a lot of Forex traders in here. So, uh, first of all, let me invite you to visit the blog if you haven't seen it yet, ptutrendjumper.com. There's a lot of examples on there. And you could look all the way back to when we first launched in November. Hey, and Troy. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Let me interrupt real quick. I, I definitely wanted to see the Forex because now we've got a lot of Forex people. One quick question as I'm answering them. Start time on the Dowie Mini that you use on the plan? That one I didn't really know offhand. The uh, freebie is at 820. Okay. And what we do in the room with the 377 tick chart is we actually start at 832. Okay. <coughs> that's, that's, that's central time. Central. Sorry, I had to sneeze there. That's okay. That was central time, right? Not New York time. It's exactly. Chart time. Central time. Exchange time. Exchange okay. Time. Thanks. So remember, the five-minute chart is a completely different personality than a tick chart. And so you have to kind of accommodate for it. And what I found is that with the five-minute chart, sometimes you can cheat a little and cheat that U.S. open at, at you know, 8.30 or 9.30 Eastern and get in on a trade that sets up pre-market and even get in five or ten minutes before the open, and I'm just finding it to be very successful. And I mean, great. You could be done trading before everyone's even had their first cup of coffee. So I like that. Um, so what I was going to say is on ptutrendjumper.com, the blog, you can go all the way back and look at the history, and you'll see the common thread. You'll see the same thing, and you'll just see it just keep doing what it does over and over and over and over. And it will keep doing what it does because this is purely based on price action. And as long as action, as long as the price is moving and there's action, then the trend jumper is going to keep doing what it does. It's going to find the immediate support and resistance, give you those great setups to jump off of, and then it's just about where to exit and smart trade management. And that's all the stuff that we teach in the training and, and what we always talk about here in this hangout anyway because we all use trade plans. So here's the exact same strategy. This is on, this is a current trade. Every time I show Trend Jumper, I always show what's happening now. It's real. This is what the real trades that are happening. And these are trades that I highlighted recently. Um, I showed this the other day in the blog, and it was, you know, a few days ago. It was like a few days back, right about there. It was already hitting some targets. You had a way to build your position and actually add to your position here. And I talk about that a lot in Swing Trading Forex. Take advantage of the benefit of Forex, which is the ability to um, fine-tune your position size. And you could build a position and take advantage of the big trends. So the primary trade hit its full target much later than the actual add-on trade. When you combine all this, this is a lot of money. Meanwhile, it's still trailing. And this trade is still alive. And both these positions are still trailing. You got 260 pips to this third target, 193 to the middle one, 117 to the first. With Forex, it's easy to scale out and take profit at each of those levels. Meanwhile, we're moving our stop up, reducing risk, eliminating risk, locking in profit with the rest of our position. In this case, adding to our position, 
This one got 48 pips to the first target, 69 to the second, 95 to the third, trailing the rest of that position as well. I mean, it, it's, it's a great way to trade. So what if you're using MT4? Let me just pull that over real quick because I don't want to leave you guys out. And I know there's MT4 traders. And let me just find my screen share so I could pull it up here. And there it is. So hopefully this is big enough. Maybe I can make it a little bigger. Could you guys see that? Yeah, it's a little bit better. Make sure, Troy, uh, some people have been asking about what pairs this. They can't see the name of the pair, so make sure. Yeah. You're... All right, New Zealand USD. The New Zealand USD. This is just one of many. Um, I kind of forget the pairs, too, because I'm just kind of following the dots on the chart. But this one's New Zealand US. And here it is on MT4. And in MT4, it looked a little different. It's still an end of day, daily chart. But, you know, different brokers, different quotes, different data feeds. There's nothing you can do about that but it still works great and I've shown other examples where it actually was better on MT4. This one's pretty darn good but the trades a lot smaller. It went for uh, for 55 pips, 85 pips, 115 pips on those three targets and now it's still trailing and the trailers already got over 100 pips locked in. On trade station it got in a little sooner but that was because of just the way the data feeds were and the way that the quotes ended up on the chart okay um, I've had a lot of interest in some day trading we're not really big fans of day trading but there are some opportunities here and there maybe not where you expected a trade plan I came out recently um, was the CAD yen on a 15 minute chart and I wanted to come up with something that could be done during the Asian hours and for those who maybe were like me worked uh, during Pacific Standard Time and wanted to trade a little bit in the evening. Okay, and Asian time gives you a nice evening trade if you're on the West Coast. And so I started looking at this 15-minute chart, and this is just another trend jumper strategy. And it, um, boy, you know, MT4 is a little jumpy, but it did really well just today. Here was a trade during the Asian hours, hit the first target, hit the second target, continued lower, and there was even a really great setup during the European hours, late during the European hours, and that one also a really great winner too. And that's on a 15-minute chart. I mean, I don't really like to trade 15-minute charts, but for a day trade, it's, a, it's not a bad time frame, you know, and I'm probably going to be exploring more of these for, for those that are interested, but I still am a big believer in the daily charts for Forex. Um, let's see what else um, well a lot of crude oil traders in the house and this is one of the other signature strategy uh, trade plans that we use with trend jumper and um, this one here uh, when Mark was talking I was just watching this trade unfold some of the late morning trades are really good but that one was just a great trading market today actually but our first two trades of the day um, boy, a lot of trades today. This is why we use power of quitting. First two trades were here and here. Okay, really quick. We start at 850. This one set up at 859. So right when the pit opened, it triggered in, zoomed down, hit that full target. We go to the middle target on this one. Hey, Troy, we're not seeing your screen. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to flip over again. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, so you didn't see that trade that just happened. Oh, well. Show it to you again. Guys, good? <clears throat> yeah, so this is uh, crude oil futures, right? Yeah, crude oil futures. We do this every day in the trade room. This is one of those uh, trade plans that came out right from the get go when we first launched uh, Trend Jumper. It's the same one, keeps working, keeps working great. So we hit the middle target here. We're using some pretty cool features in the trade. Uh, in the calculator and in the, in the trend jumper tools that are dynamic and adjust that middle target according to market conditions. Um, the stop moves, locking in, trailing down, 
This trailer didn't do as well as the fixed target, but on trade number two, right here, this this little trade right there, it did better um, than the fixed target. It was a little scalp trade, but then the 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 uh, trailer actually went a little bit further. I didn't add up these points yet because I was just doing this uh, last minute. Um, as you know, I was doing the, the uh, boot camp today, so I'm a little behind schedule here. But like I said, when when you were showing uh, some stuff on PTU, this was happening in live time, and I was just going to use this as the first example to show off Trend Jumper because it was live while it happened. But since then, there were a lot more trades, and uh, oh well, <laughs> those were winners too, actually. Um, a little late in the day to be trading crude oil. So, Mark, I could talk about this for a long time. I mean, there are a lot of great examples, and I thought, you know, maybe I should turn it back to you and see if uh, – actually, one more thing. I'm sorry. Before we do that, let me just look at the free trade uh, on Euro US because this is the other one that we gave away, and I know there's a lot of people interested in this one too. And this one is not like the Dowie Mini. It's way different because it's a daily chart, and it's slow, and it takes time, and you have to be patient. And so there's a setup that occurred actually yesterday. And it's right there. And the entry is at 3148. And as you learn in training, we're going to push that up over the 50 and probably get in around 3156 after spread. And uh, that one's targeting 3506, so that final target. But you got some targets along the way that are pretty good 3241. 3307. So good targets. And just to go backwards and just kind of show you, this has been out of sight. It's been tested for 10 straight years. This is the last trade. Okay, made hundreds of pips. This was the trade before. Look how accurate that target is. Again, jumping off that trampoline as soon as it loses its momentum and starts to fall down. That's where it's looking to find its targets in this case. Hit it right on the nail, maybe too close. Here's a bigger one. This is like a trade within a trade. Sometimes you can add to your position, like in this case, hitting a couple nice targets here and then trailing. You end up stopping out of that one before it got to the third target. Next trade back, partial winner. That's still a significant winner. Then you protect the rest of your position. Next trade back, another winner. Works pretty well. They're not all winners. This one here, that was a winner. I didn't mark it up, but you could see that it, the stop held, target hit, another target hit. Didn't get to the third. You're not going to get to the third that often, but it doesn't matter because you're trailing down. Nice long trade did not trigger in at all. It canceled, avoiding a loss. Next trade back, no trade again. It canceled, avoiding a loss. Looking for a loser here. Next trade, nice big winner. Next trade, cancel trade. Ah, sorry about that, guys. I cannot produce something that's going to win 100% of the time. If I Come did, on, Troy. Probably... I mean, that, what's wrong with you? I mean, that I was, uh, what was that, July of 2012? I mean, uh, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. This, this would, be, it would be too good if, or there'd be something illegal if, if it won every yeah. time. Hey, let's uh, answer some questions here. All right. As we go, and I think you made the point, you know, they've got this Euro USD, uh, and you're right, you have to wait a while. I mean, this is amazing results, obviously, over, um, a, a, you know, a decent length of time, but you're sitting there trading, I mean, how many currency pairs uh, at once, Troy? I mean, on the daily? A lot. I mean, a I lot? don't know. Okay, that's, 20, that's fine. There you go. 20? 20. Yeah. Maybe. So, every now and then, you... one's like too many big long wicks and messy bars, and it's like, Eh, that's I got too many others. I'm not gonna fret fret over one or two here and there. Yeah, it makes sense. Hey, let me um, answer some of these questions, um, Kristen. If you're listening, uh, if you don't mind, not to uh, approve them, if they they start to stack up, but I can't see them. So I uh, appreciate that. So let me just go back. Uh, there was one here. Um, let's see. Okay, somebody was asking about um, the YM. Would you suggest doing it on a one minute? I mean, I'm sure the answer is going to be no because the target is going to be too small. Isn't that correct, Troy? It is correct. Um, and all, yeah, too small. And then you, I mean, you're going to find that it might work from time to time. But I mean, I'd rather go with uh, a bigger time frame. If you don't include things like 
commission and slippage, you know, <laughs> yeah, it might work right. just fine. And right. so a lot of people get suckered into S&P mini uh, systems, which make like a tick or two and win 90% of the time. And then they don't realize they'll never be able to, to execute upon those. So we're going to say typically no. The YM, I know like on PTU, we're using like six-point range bars. Um, Troy's got the five-minute on the free. He's got 377 tick. Uh, on the full version, so and like I mentioned, the full version will have all those forex pairs and numerous different futures uh, markets. Uh, Guess four six nine. Uh, let's see, he downloaded the Trend Jumper. Uh, can I use Trade Station without funding? And how do I get in the trade room? Well, the trade room is going to be part of the Trend Jumper. So if you go ahead and join the full version, you become a full system owner uh, starting next week. You'll have access immediately to the live training rooms. Uh, Brian, do you want to tackle that uh, Trade Station one? Um, yes, I just want to be clear on what he's asking. Um, it's best if you fund an account with TradeStation. That's the most economical uh, way to get involved with them. You can use TradeStation on a subscription basis. Uh, I believe it's uh, $250 a month, r roughly. So if you wanted to, you could get involved that way if you don't have the, the funds to uh, set up an account at this point. There. Okay, um, let's see. Next one is the, uh, okay, so can the free version uh, be on the crude and what time frame, please? So that's really something you can experiment on any other markets that uh, you'd like to. Um, but that's, you know, we, we gave you the free, which we gave you a lot. We had to kind of like, uh, I don't know what we had to do to Troy. We had to kind of convince him, knock him out, coerce him. Okay, put a gun to his head to even release what we did. So uh, the full version is going to have crude oil plants, heating oil, unleaded gas, 20 different Forex markets. You'll even be able to trade it using stocks. I mean, there's a whole bunch more there. But you're free to experiment with anything that you'd like to. That's for sure. We're not going to stop you. Uh, I promise Troy won't put a gun to your head. You can do whatever you like on that. Um, let's see. Is the Trend Jumper free for MetaTrader 4 template be placed in any pair? I thought it was only tuned for Euro US dollar. Yeah, so Troy, right? It's it's that plan was specific to the Euro US, correct? Yes. Okay. When I when I showed you the New Zealand US as an example, that was a full trend jumper. And that I use the exact same plan on every pair. But this particular free one is completely different. It only focuses on the one setup only and it's it's designed differently. Yeah, and the, that's kind of the point. Uh, with the full-fledged version, there's a whole lot more going on. I mean, it's kind of like if you like what you're seeing in the free, you're going to be pretty amazed uh, by what you're going to get in the full because we have a whole bunch of additional things, add-on trades, trailing trades, additional setups, and then, of course, all the additional pairs. But we really wanted to give you guys a chance to really see how this works, even down to the most basic level. And we've been getting tons of feedback that people are making money with it already, you know, in the free mode. So it's one of those things to kind of maybe whet your appetite a little bit about what you ultimately are going to be able to do uh, starting next week. Let me see. We've got some more questions. Let me try to catch up here. Um, so guest 848 says, uh, first, thanks for the free uh, version of Trend Jumper to try out. He uses Ninja Trader. He notices that I, he says he can't access the side entry exit target info that you show by clicking on the bar in the chart. Is that normal for Ninja Trader? So maybe that's when you maybe click on the bar that on TradeStation uh, the data pops up. I, I don't know. Brian or, or Troy, do you guys do you guys know an answer on that one? He's got to open the data window. Um, yeah. There's a command in, in Ninja where you can open up the data window. Um, with TradeStation, it's a different command. You click on a button and it opens up. With Ninja and with MetaTrader 4, you can open up the data window, and when you click on the bar, you're going to see all the parameters. Right. Uh, guest 741 uh, talking about not wanting to hold overnight. So uh, in your case, uh, all of our Forex swing plans are held because obviously that's how Troy is able to get 100, 200, 300, 500 pip moves. And then he's got multiple add-ons in these big moves that you guys aren't even seeing uh, in the free system. But if you're not comfortable with overnight, then we would definitely say day trading, right? We've got a number of different day trading approaches. And in those cases, there's never any carryover. Well, Mark, I would also say this. Um, obviously, we're using daily charts. I mean, the, the chart closes at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. if you're going to trade those, you're holding it. You might hold it for weeks. But here's the, here's the thing. You just have to put on small risk. You have to find that comfort zone 
we never want to put on more than 2% of our ca account and probably less if you're using TrendJumper because you're going to want to reserve some risk allotment for additional setups. So, you know, you put on a quarter percent risk. I mean, I don't know how big your account is, but trade micros. You know, you can make a lot of money and build your account up little by little by little. A year or two down the road, you're up to a few full-size lots and the, the percentage of your risk is still tiny compared to your capital. So the secret of holding overnight is small risk and then you should be able to sleep at night and you don't miss these great opportunities. Yeah, Nigel was saying almost like a follow-on here. He's finishing his second week uh, paper trading uh, trend jumper with MetaTrader 4. He's checking 31. Wow, that could be a record. Uh, Forex pairs daily. What number would you recommend to check daily as a new starter? Yeah, 31 I think is way too many. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out somewhere between 10 to 20 tops. But what do you think, Troy? I agree. I mean, I think you could start out with six to 12, mm -hmm. yeah. and then here's the thing. And I know a lot of people overlook this because they're so enthusiastic. They want to go straight to the charts, straight to the markets, and make a lot of money. But the way you're going to make money is thinking like a business person. So give yourself a chance to ramp up and scale up and go slow and methodical to start. Do your foundational work like we talked about in the success guide. Okay, If you don't put a bunch of trades into a trade log and build a win-loss column for yourself, you're never going to see the trees from the forest or the forest from the trees. You're going to only see the trees. You're not going to see the forest, and that's your equity curve going up. So if you don't know that how this pair behaves over a period of time versus that pair versus that pair, and if they all dance to a different rhythm, then you're going to get shaken out as soon as, like what Brian said, you hit a few losses, and you have no way to put that in context. Okay? These systems work, but they're only as good as a trader trading them, really. And so I'll, to become a really good trader, you want to arm yourself with all that great information where you have that big point of view perspective. That's what I always talk about. And start with a few pairs, three or four or five. Hey, Troy, and give a give a suggestion how somebody picks those um, picks the one to start with. Well, you, if you're you, you're better off picking some that are not quite as correlated. Like you don't want to just pick all yen pairs. All right, you might pick a euro. You might pick a yen. You might pick a pound. You might pick an Aussie. You might pick a Canadian dollar. That, that's what I, I would agree with. That I think you, you hit it on the head. Diversify. Just be a little bit uncorrelated. Don't get into the business of trying to predict which pair is going to be hot next month and the next six months. We don't really know. None of us know. I mean, people pretend they know, but they don't. So I think if you follow Troy's advice, if you had like a, a Euro Aussie, a Euro CAD, a Euro US, a Franc Yen, a, a Pound Yen, you know, if you really mix it up a little bit. That's going to be best bet. Don't sweat over, you know, that you might miss a good trade on one of the 30 pairs that you're not covering. You don't need to worry about it because you're going to miss losers too. I mean, so uh, just don't overkill it, and that's usually a mistake. A uh, bunch more questions. Let's try to go through these. Uh, Ron, you were asking, will it work on other charts? And it will, but you may need to modify a little bit. I mean, that's what we do. We spend our lives doing is customizing the markets and figuring out the behavior of markets like we showed you today, the Nikkei. Brent crude, you know, we're showing you some weird stuff. Uh, they all have little different personalities. Uh, every market behaves a little bit differently. So that's kind of what you get uh, with us doing the hard work as far as figuring out which markets work and which ones don't because not every market is worth trading. We throw away quite a few uh, markets because we're not going to force something to work if it's not going to be uh, profitable. As far as cost goes on the full version, you can definitely get started. You'll see next week just a few hundred dollars. Uh, we've got payment plans available. We make it as approachable as possible. It's never been a big issue or a complaint uh, on the pricing, so we'll make that available to you next week. Um, templates for other pairs, guess 941. When you get the full trend jumper, uh, you're going to get everything you need to trade all the markets, plus a whole bunch more we haven't even covered today. And it does get very specific uh, because we want to make sure that you're trading the markets that we know work. I mean, uh, so that'll all be part of the full full training, plus the live training, you'll see us actually trading a number of other markets. All right, let's see. We got some more questions here from Paul. Uh, says he's traded the free on the Euro US and US Yen, Aussie US. The only one he lost on was US Yen, so that's great. I mean, keep it up. Um, I always tell people your objective, I think, in successful real trading is 60 to 65 percent winners or more, and you're killing it. So I think that's a fair objective. We always call it the two out of three rule. 
that's sort of what we're looking for here. I never believe anybody who's way above that because I know something's wrong with the way that they've set up their system, too much risk, or they're taking too small of a target. Any professional successful trader that I've ever talked to, they're over 50%, but they tend to be somewhere in that 50 to 65% uh, percent range. Uh, guess 741, yeah, back to your question on uh, sessions. Yeah, if you want to be in and out during the cash session, it's got to be typically one of our many day trading plans, and that's what you're going to want to stick with. And I, I can understand that totally. Brian was saying that we both trade a, a joint account, and, and all those are in and out uh, the same day in that specific account. We don't have any carryover. Uh, is the software delivered over the internet? So that's with the Trend Jumper. You will download uh, indicators and, and things of that nature, but we'll also ship you a full course. Uh, so you kind of have that uh, to both learn uh, and also have it for your reference. Uh, okay, so right, so somebody, uh, this must have been uh, Netflix trading, maybe that was Ron or Will or somebody else, uh, saying on uh, Ninja and the data window, we have a set of video that shows them all that a Ninja and MetaTrader 4. So so you can see your data. Nigel, I think uh, Troy answered your question there on helping choose the markets. Ron, how, did, how about MetaTrader 4 charts? Uh, well, MetaTrader 4 is definitely part of Trend Jumper as long as it's Forex, because obviously that's primarily what you'll chart inside of uh, MetaTrader 4. Guest 890 got in late. Where can I get the instructions for using the tool? I have it installed on TradeStation. So uh, Brian or, or Troy, do you want to kind of just review with them a little bit uh, what happens after they uh, put their name and they, they start their download? I'll let you take that, Brian. Yeah, Troy, take it. I mean, you did the instructional video. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't know how it's getting delivered or anything. So. Well, you did the instructional video. He's just asking uh, what, what to do after he down, downloads it. Well, Troy was saying he doesn't know exactly where, I mean, does it get delivered in an email? Is there a link? What's the... Um, it's right on the page that they get. Uh, I don't know how to explain it any other Well, other tell way. them what happens after they opt in. Well, yeah, after you opt in, you get an email that uh, basically uh, details the, you know, it sounds like you've downloaded the instructions, so right there on that same page, uh, there's a video from Troy that shows you well, what to do with it. Is that like one video, I guess, on there? Uh, it's a, yeah, single video. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and Troy, did you have it broken down by like TradeStation, Ninja, Meta, or did you have just one overall video? Well, there's an install video, Brian, which I didn't do. I thought somebody else did that one. I, all I did was teach you the strategy. So. Right, but it sounds like this guy has the indicators on. He just wants to know what to do with it. So that would be watch Troy's video uh, on, on the, the trade plan. The trade. Yep. There's a PDF file that explains it clearly. All right, let's see. Um, we've got uh, the bars on my tick charts change when I reload the data. How can I prevent this? I don't know what platform you're on. I don't ever have that issue with uh, TradeStation on tick bars. I don't know about Ninja if that's something that, uh, that happens. Range bars definitely never change unless there's literally an update that comes through from the exchange or the data provider if you hit a control R on TradeStation, so I'm not really sure which uh, platform you're using there. Will the first full version uh, require and come with uh, lifetime updates? So obviously we'll get into all this uh, in detail uh, next week, uh, but certainly uh, we do provide additional plans and updates and revised trade plans as, as markets evolve, so that's something that we definitely do. We always look at this as a very dynamic thing. We're trading with you side by side, so uh, we're in the markets ourselves every day. So we're very much aware of when things are performing, when they're outperforming, or when we really need to, to tweak things a little bit. Guess 281, what is your method in trading the YM? Well, we've been talking about the free version that we've uh, distributed out there on the five-minute YM, and then, uh, of course, the full-fledged version of the uh, Trend Jumper trades off of uh, tick charts as well. Uh, and Troy was mentioning the streak. What is the streak again, Troy? How many days or trades? Or Last I checked, which was like before the boot camp a couple days ago, it was like 36 out of 37 sessions. It's one or something like that. Somewhere so in there. So you did have another losing day, huh, Troy? Uh, uh, well, the last one was on the, uh, tw uh, the 15th of March. How dare you? And then the 15th of February before that. 
Uh, Nigel saying, fantastic advice, Troy, as usual. I've learned so much from you. What is that? Is that your brother? Um, How much did you pay him? <laughs> hey, Checks thanks, in the Nigel. Mail, Nigel. <laughs> no, I mean, Nigel and I haven't met, uh, but except in the trade room, but I'm glad someone's listening to my <laughs> psycho babble. Let's see, guess uh, 965. Yeah, if you're having any uh, issue... Uh, so you've been unable to get the download to work. I have the indicator saved, but the instructions won't download. Tried twice so far. Just contact us. What's a good support uh, email, Brian, for the, for him to use? Because we're we're good at this part. Yeah, support at uh, PTU PremierTraderUniversity.com is probably the best one. Um, and uh, then we can just get that out to one of our support uh, guys, and they'll they'll be in touch either through email. They may ask you for um, your contact information. Uh, if it's something that needs a little more inter interaction. Yeah, I'll just put the, I put it in there in the chat too. So it's just support, not support PTU Premier Trader, support at premiertraderuniversity.com. He was short shortcutting on us. Shortcutting it, yeah. But yeah, we'll we'll help you on that. We've had some people, you know, had a few issues. Uh shouldn't be a problem. I mean, uh we've got uh, the team here is it's fully fluent in all the platforms. Um guess for twenty, what's a successful session making fifteen ticks or more? Geez, geez, I would say making one tick or more, but I don't know. Troy, what do you think? What's a successful session? Well, I mean, there's this concept that's called the power of quitting. Um, we could thank Mark for that, who brought that to us years ago, and it's been phenomenal. It's been holding up ever since, and it's a dynamic goal-setting approach. It actually adjusts to market conditions. It's dynamic. We take what the market wants to give us. So if the market wanted to give me uh, 13 points today on the Dowie Mini like like it did, then to me, that's my goal. It's a successful session. Yesterday, it wanted to give me 83 points. That was successful. It, it, you know, so it's success is measured in a different, uh, different ways. And for us, it's dynamic. I mean, I want to be successful as a trader going forward long term. Okay, if I win a few trades, that's kind of insignificant. If I lose a few trades, equally insignificant. What's significant is that you have a winning track over time and that you have a business that's operating making you profit over time. That to me is what success is, is trading and that's a successful trade business. Thank you. Uh, Steve G says he got the free install on Ninja and followed it today. He has one question about moving to break even. Uh, if you're trading one Dowie Mini, market moves let's say 12 points in your direction but target two is 20, so target not yet hit, do you move trade above, below, entry to break even. All right, I, I'm sorry. I, I, um, Do you not see the chat or you don't have the... Uh, it might be easier. I could read it to you again, but it's, it's a 20-point target and it's moved 12 points in, uh, in his favor. He's just trying to understand when you move to break even. Um, well, the trade plan says when you get to target number two, right, but you're only trading one position. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't really have any uh, move the stop to break even until you get to the middle target as part of the trade plan. I mean, there okay, are so, things... so in this case, if you're trading two positions, you, you would move to yeah. break even on target two. So as a fixed one, he's going for 20 points, give or, or nothing, basically. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no move of the stop. Exactly. Now, now we teach I, things. Go ahead. Sorry, Troy. Well, I was just going to say what you're going to say. There's the whole trading for profit. I mean, if you miss yeah. the target by one tick, you know, maybe you don't want to give it all the way back, and you want to take a little bit off of that. Okay. Yeah, we and go I into think, a lot of details on that in the in the training, and it's yeah. uh, the trade for profit. We get ninety percent of the way to target, and we have some much deeper suggestions that uh, are in the in the full the full training. Uh, some questions on the pricing. So um, we're still nailing some of that down, uh, and I know there's been several questions on that. But like I said, it'll be certainly you know it's under a thousand dollars. So don't worry about it being like some five thousand dollar thing or anything like that. We've got some payment plans. We have a MetaTrader four only version. Uh, so we've really tried to be as flexible as we can. And when we've released it before, it's been you know within range for for most people. So just be aware of that. We'll have all the details uh, in the Thursday webinars coming up. Uh, Guess 436 says he's got Ninja Trader. Can you show more examples uh, on Ninja? We have definitely a set of videos and full training uh, for Ninja. I don't have any, I'm not running it on my system right now. I don't know if you have any Ninja charts, but 
uh, Troy, but I, running. But I assume it's you know, it's basically the same beyond just the platform being different. Correct. It, it is the same. Yeah, and the platform is different. It has a t slightly different look and feel, but it works identical. And no, I don't have Ninja running. Yeah, I guess 941, uh, you know, obviously that was on purpose. You know, we, we gave you quite a bit for free, as you've seen from the other comments, but we, you know, obviously have left out some of the properties that are adjustable, and that's in the full version, just to be, of course, fair to us a little bit. Uh, and uh, like I said, we had to put that gun to, to Troy's head if we would have actually allowed the settings to also be adjusted. I think he probably would have turned the gun around on me. So um, anyway, that's, that's the reason for that. But you'll have a lot more flexibility uh, with the full version. Main difference between Trend Jumper and SST, obviously we get this question. Uh, the, the, the similarities is you'll be trading some of the same markets for sure, but that's kind of where the differences uh, or the similarities kind of end. Uh, it's a completely different, unique trade system. Uh, it sort of stands on its, on its own. I mean, both could be long at a given time, but there's no correlation beyond that. Um, any other main differences? I mean, there's quite a few improvements. I know that, right, Troy? Yeah, I mean, it's a completely different personality. The SST is probably a lot more complicated, more moving parts. I mean, you can't have a one shoe fits all with SST like you do with Trend Jumper, where you're pretty much using the identical strategy on just a bunch of different charts. So, uh, I mean, the Trend Jumper kind of came out of the whole SST experience, and I just think. Uh, for me, it's more a reflection of my style of trading, more so than the SST, which the SST might have been a few years back, but not now Trend Jumper is more is closer to what I like to do. Very good. Uh, let's see, sort of ask out here late. What chart time tick range? Yeah, the free uh, Dowie Mini is on the five minute, so just a five minute time interval. Uh, though, once you get started with the full Trend Jumper, we'll be involved with range bars and tick bars, momentum bars, we get a lot fancier once we get going. But we started real simple with uh, the free uh, version overall. Um, Brian, there's a comment here from Ash, sent you an email, uh, just needed to receive an, a reply, he said. I don't know if that rings a bell at all. So um, I can save this comment. I don't. I don't I wanted to sort of put his name out there because he's, he's got a couple personal things here that that uh, are in here. So, uh, Mark, I got a screenshot of uh, Ninja. Yeah, go ahead. Found. If someone wants to take a look, I show yeah, you. Yeah, you can pull it up while we're going through questions here. Uh, I don't know if I can make it any bigger. I just pulled this off of an email that someone sent me, but I'll show it to you. Um, I guess this will do it. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I see it. All right, so unfortunately it's small, and I'm not sure if I could, I don't even know how to zoom in on this, but, I mean, it's the same thing. You got the dots, you got the entry, the, the targets above, the stop below, you got the same lines, you got the same nice trades. Picking up the big move here in the pound U.S., or the pound yen, actually. That's what this is. Grabbing the trades up, grabbing the trades down. Anyway. Very good. There it is. Yep. Uh, let me see. I have uh, MetaTrader 4 with your system. Should I be seeing arrows on the screen? So you don't see the arrows, right, Troy? You're just marking up for visual. So you'll, you'll see the, the entries, the little pluses, and the projected out targets, but you won't see the arrows. We just like to mark it up to make it a little bit more visual. I even, when I'm trading myself, sometimes will mark things up with arrows, horizontal lines, just to kind of help you know, guide myself as well, so yep. just kind of be aware of that. Okay, let me see what else we've got here. I think, do one final call out for any final questions while you guys still have us. I know it's a little longer hangout than usual. We had a lot of people on, lots of questions, so we, we don't like to just jump off. We do this hangout every Friday, so come back again next Friday. We always try to have some different topics, as you see uh, in mind. We, we do different things every week. We try to teach you as much as we can. Uh, we have different guests on, different coaches from week to week. So it's always here, same time, uh, same place. And then this gives you an opportunity to ask us a whole bunch of questions. I know from Mo was asking about the uh, the weekly update that I normally give you guys on all the PTU2 trade plans. I uh, just did not have time to, uh, to update that uh, for this week. But I'm going to do them all, obviously, over the weekend and get you guys all the updated trade plans. 
and all the results for the week, which look pretty good uh, overall. And then uh, next Friday, I'll go ahead and just update on the, the two consecutive weeks. So we'll do it that way. Could you, uh, let's see, 282. Mark, could you post the results spreadsheet for the markets on the owner's site? I guess 282. I'm not exactly sure if, are you referring to PTU2? Trend jumper, the normal trade plans, maybe specify a little bit. That would be great. Uh, let me see. Thank you, guest 287. We appreciate it, whoever you are. Nice comment. Thank you. Uh, guest 14 says, uh, this must be Detroit. My kind of trading clothes. Shorts and a T-shirt are great. I mean, I dressed up for you guys. I got the collar on. <laughs> Trust me, this was not on before this hangout, needless to say. so I wear pajamas. Yeah. Do you have the, the the PJ pants on right now? No, not today. Oh, okay. So you got a little you got a little got decked outside out for us. a little bit. <laughs> okay, I know. Sometimes it's scary. I'm like, oh, it's sunny outside. How'd this happen? Yeah, it's kind of sad. Uh, let's see. Guess 741. I wish I would have found you a month earlier <laughs> before I spent 5k on another program. Uh, guess 741. I I wish you would have as well because you would never have to spend that uh, with us. But I'm glad you found us now, which is great. All right, let me see if there's any other questions here. Brian, I'm going to get you this, uh, hopefully if I can paste it somehow, this question from this one guy to get back with him. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up. I think that's uh, long enough. So, Brian, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Have a good week, everybody. A good week next week, a good weekend. Sounds good. And, Troy, thank you. I think you probably want to rest up a little bit at this point. It's been a long, long week for you. Yeah, it's been fun, though. Good. good. Boot camp was good. Boot camp was, fun. was awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Good. We had a little trend jumper boot camp going. That was great. So we'll uh, give you guys a chance to get involved in that uh, next time around. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. See you next Friday. See you on the Thursday webinars as well. Take care.